Welcome to the good, the bad, and the sequel with your hosts, Doug and Jamie. We are back, and this is the movie podcast where we're talking sequels, and we do it in two parts. The first, an interview with an actor or someone involved that made the film worth watching. I hope you enjoyed last week's interview with R.A. Mihailov, Leatherface himself. He was pretty awesome. And then second, we discussed the sequel, what they got right, what they got wrong, and how it could have been better. And I cannot wait to talk about Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. But before we dive into this bloody movie... I have to introduce you to my partner in the sequel watching journey, Jamie Riccardi. Jamie, how you doing? I'm doing great, Doug. How are you doing? Pretty good. So I know horror is not up your alley. No, it, it's not. And it's the first um, Texas Chainsaw movie, movie that I saw. So this is, Really? Um, oh, yes, it is. So uh, I definitely have a lot of questions. Okay. Well, you're going to be able to uh, get them answered <laughs> maybe by me or since we're not too in depth with horror, you're not a horror expert. We have one on. He also writes comic reviews, movie reviews, and it's somebody I've known for a long time, Chris Egan. How you doing, Chris? Hey, Doug, man. It's, uh, I'm ready to do this. I'm, I'm ready. I'm psyched. <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm really excited to talk about this movie. For oh, yeah, reasons, me too. Yeah. You know, but, um, and I uh, talked to you about this months ago, and you watched it way back then, <laughs> and then you re-upped uh, this morning. Yeah. The rainy yeah. Sunday morning. What's, what's funny about that is, so, so when we first discussed it, I was like, all right, so I'll watch it. Maybe we'll, we'll do the episode in a couple of weeks. And then I was, <laughs> I wasn't hearing anything. So yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, let him take his time. It's, it's cool. But, <laughs> but in, in the time since I uh, actually got rid of cable. Um, so I stick to just like streaming services now. So originally I watched this movie like free on demand through, you know, stars or whoever. Uh, and then I went to rewatch it and it's nowhere for free, like on my fire stick, like no service has it. No. So I just had to like find some shady ass streaming site on my laptop. I hope my laptop's okay. <laughs> Cause I was just watched that this morning and it was, I didn't have, I mean, luckily I didn't have to download anything, but well, that's good. Well, was, you know, it was good I, to re up. It was good I, to refresh it. I found it on the fire stick and, but it was the only stream. Like it was only usually on the fire stick. There's like 15 different places you can watch it. Mm-hmm. There was only one to watch. And in the middle of the movie, every like 20 seconds, it would load and they go back. So like it was oh, like okay. dragging. Like, so like the last 20 minutes took me about 45 minutes to watch. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. No, I, this was a clear stream. Yeah. I watched the whole <laughs> thing in one sitting. So I lucked out in that respect. But uh, now, is this the first time you guys seen this movie? I mean, like, or you've seen it multiple times and like you knew it? No, no. I've, I've only seen this one. T- this morning was probably the third or fourth time I've seen it. Um, and what's funny is I'm um, actually one of the reasons I'm, I'm excited to talk about this movie is because this franchise, it's not like one of my all time favorites. Like it's not like Halloween or nightmare on Elm street. It's not like it, it doesn't hold a special place for me. Um, I definitely, I love the first two movies for the, for what they are. They're very, they're very different movies from each other. Um, I own those movies. I don't own this one, obviously since I had to go hunting for it, but <laughs> I'm excited to talk about it because I, don't know that much about it like outside of like a few things i looked up and and just watching it a handful of times it's a it's a wild movie it's oh yeah it's pretty different um from from the others and 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 kind of from what was coming out at the time um so i don't know what did you guys think of it i don't you know i don't i don't want to that was my question so i had the two questions so those are two questions that i have so one is is since i don't know anything about the the franchise at all i mean i know the, the basic of the first movie but is Leatherface the same character in every movie or is it someone yes. else donning the mask or it's the same person? It's the yeah. same person for the first three. Okay. Definitely. All right. <laughs> All right. Now the other question is, are the other characters in the other movies as well? The family. So from the first to the second, there's some, there's some family members that die in the first movie. The rest of the survivors end up in the second with a few other add-ons. And then between two and three, the continuity and the canon gets real weird, which is <laughs> which I have to say is kind of the case for this whole franchise. Uh, you know, remakes aside, the the first four movies in the series don't make a whole lot of sense if you watch them back to back. Besides one and two, one and two, you can see a connection. Um, there's a direct connection, but even the the tone of those two is so wildly different. The first one, you know, is that dark student film 
gritty, you know, Toby Hooper and gang were filming in the backwoods of Texas. Like they had no money. And then the second one, 10 years later, he has this bigger studio budget. He's got a bunch of, bunch of the guys from the original movie, a bunch of new, like uh, some like Bihar stars are, are popping up in it. And he goes for like dark humor in that one. Even there's some dark humor in the original, but this was like, it's number two's wacky. Like it goes, <laughs> it goes wild in some of the humor. It's a, it's actually a really fun sequel. So I, I recommend that one. I recommend the first two. Um, this one, I don't know if I can recommend it, but I, but, <laughs> but I don't hate it. It's, it's, uh, it's fun. It's, it's a hodgepodge of things, no doubt. Um, but it, I, you can't you can't say they weren't trying. Everyone in this movie, everyone in front of the camera, behind the camera, was trying to do something. Oh yeah, and they succeeded to to get something out there. But uh, <laughs> so, so th- does it take place right after the second one? I don't think so. It's okay. there's no real there's no real timeline. Okay, like one and two, it's like a few years later, I think, or it's like okay. yeah, whatever. There's there is a description at the beginning of two. That, that says hey you know this is picking up so many years later and, <laughs> yeah, this one's just like hey the family's still out there but this movie starts and you're like okay there's Leatherface the rest of the family I think is dead <laughs> who are these are these like second cousins they're bringing in like I don't know who these people are I know and it's funny that this one starts off kind of the same way they have a lot of reading to do right off the beginning and then I didn't read any of it but I just listened kind of but I'm well, just yeah, I mean, it, the, this is the narrator. He t- yeah. he's, he reads verbatim what's on the screen. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you don't have to really even look up. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, what? It's like one of those things they're trying to tell you so much that's going on. And I'm just like, all right, is this a lot in between the two movies? But it just kind of gives you like a heads up. Like, hey, this is what you're going to be watching right now. Yeah. So is this like one of those then horror franchises where the bad guy like never dies? Like they didn't even like they only like did he die in the first three or like no no and, and, and what's funny is that so usually when that happens it's like there's a supernatural reason right. you know Jason comes back to life or right. or Michael Myers just has you know oddball strength because he's crazy <laughs> uh, this one is Le- Leatherface gets like a small injury at the end of the original one and two he's just like left so, like he's he's just out there so it's it in that regards, I kind of respect it. Like we're not bringing back this killer that shouldn't be back. He's just, he just got away at the end. He's out there. (laughs) And that's kind of what makes the end of the first one. So scary is that yes, the girl gets away. Yes. She's taken out some of the family, but for the most part, they're intact and Leatherface is out there and he's just going to come after the next person. So, um, but this, yeah, this one, (laughs) This movie. Well, let's let's get right into it. So yeah, this is I'm, another I'm one. This is kind of like it reminds me of the beginning of Poltergeist too, because it gets right to it. Usually, yes. some movies have like a little bit of like, hey, this is you know maybe a scene like scream that kills somebody, then the title card comes out. This it's just right in the beginning. They did not mess around. Oh, he's dragging a body right in the first set. That you know. <laughs> I'm like, what did, what did Doug getting into? I mean, like I said, I don't like horror <laughs> movies. And already the first scene, they're dragging a bloody body Ugh. across the floor. And when he's cutting the mask up. <laughs> that's, Ugh. I actually, I really was into that. Um, <laughs> and I'm not like, there's certain movies, you know, I like the gore. It really depends on how it's handled. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of another conversation for another day. But like, <laughs> I'm not a huge gore fan, but I, but you got, you know, this had uh, K and B doing the effects, which is uh, Greg Nicotero. Uh, is the guy that co-founded them. Oh, wow. I mean, they've been at the top of the game since the beginning. So yeah. watching the bodies, watching him cutting that skin. <laughs> I was like, yes, this is so good. Like, this is so, it's so, it looks great. Uh, and the movie does look great. That's the other thing is that for, you know, it had a, it had a decent budget for, uh, for the. Yeah. Lady. I think it was 3 million was this movie, I think. Yeah. Which is, which is pretty, pretty good for. Oh like, yeah. Like, I think that's as much as like any of the mid range like Friday the 13th Scott, you, you oh, know, yeah. and those movies made a ton of money. So the studio was willing to, to give them money. Whereas this is like, this is a franchise that each sequel is spaced out by like a decade or almost a decade. Yeah. But you said it best. This movie visually looks, uh, I think it looks amazing. The shots, the way it looks, it has, and this is the first one new line bought the rights. Mm-hmm. So it's like the first new line done. So it kind of has that camera feel of like, 
a nightmare on Elm Street. Like it has like a really good, not like super grainy, like yeah. Not saying tech, that's what made the original so good the way it looked. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But this is just, glossier. This is yeah. Uh, yeah. This, well, has, you know, this one also I don't think was really that all around gory. Oh no. Uh, no. What I heard about and you know, my daughter, you know, likes to sit down and do kind of reviews with me. She wasn't watching this movie. She was kind of scared, mm-hmm. but she was intrigued at the same time of the story. And she goes, Dad, I'm actually interested in this story. Like she, she actually liked it, and you know, she doesn't like hard, gory stuff. But it really, it was more just like it was creepy. It wasn't gory. It wasn't yeah. scary. It was just creepy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, opening up. Uh, yeah, once you get past those the girls in the beginning, <laughs> and then you get to the uh, the body pits where like the reporters are staked out, and, and oh yeah, and the forensics guys are there. That was like it reminded me of like an X Files. You know, just yeah. the look of it. It's it the and that's the other thing. This this movie is, it feels like multiple movies cut together. It goes on tangents, and it, it does. It feels to me, it felt like, especially this, today watching it again, it felt like three separate movies cut together. <laughs> which part of me was kind of into, but you could also kind of see that there was like definitely there had to be like studio tampering with that. Like they're like, okay, well we we don't like the way the story's going this way, so we're gonna add this, and we don't like the way the story's going this way, so we'll add this. And kind of you know chop it all together, but um, it, it 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 goes between looking like a slasher, like an '80s slasher, and like an early '90s cop thriller. Like it has <laughs> it has like that not you know not as good as like Sons of the Lambs, but like those you know those like '90s thrillers that were like all the rage, like Copycat. Oh and, yeah, and you know stuff like that where there's like a cop at the center of the story. It looks like that kind of movie, but it's not that kind of movie yeah. <laughs> whatsoever. You, you know, you said X Files, and I actually, when those forensic guys were walking around in their astronaut outfits, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was yeah. thinking, like, is that a normal outfit they wear? Like, I mean, like, I never, I mean, I'm not a forensic expert, but I, I mean, some, I will say, some of the dialogue in that beginning, they, they really snuck in some decent exposition. <laughs> yeah, they did. Like in their conversation, which usually it's kind of ham fisted, but. I liked how they were like, they were talking about like, Oh, this, you know, the body's been down there so long. It's, it's toxic. Like they you know, cause they're just shoved in a hole. And I, I kind of, I kind of liked it. I really liked the way this movie starts. You know, I, I think they did a good job with it. I, I, I do. I like, especially that, that segment. How do you think, how do you think you get that job? The body cleanup job when they're, like, <laughs> t- when they're taking the parts of the body and like, they're like grossing themselves out. But like, that was a pretty gross scene. Well, yeah, it's super, it's super gross. And, <laughs> and obviously, you know, things like that have happened in real life, but there's no way that the guy that's on scene is going to be complaining that he's going to throw up in the suit. <laughs> I know <laughs> they're not, they went to school for this. Like <laughs> they've seen it a hundred times, you know, that's what those body farms are for. It's literally that they've trained. They're not going to throw up. That should be the job interview. You walk in, they're like, okay, you know, we, you see you went to the best schools for body parts. Can you just uh, stick your head in this bucket? And then they don't vomit. They're like, you're hired. Just, just breathe deeply. What do you think the, what do you think the major is for that? Oh, it's, I mean, it's got to be something. I'm sure you go to like pre-med. Ugh, stick in the head. It's, it's got to be something, something medical. And then i've actually I, I mean i know a few people that have gotten into the medical field and i know oh. people that have actually gotten into the forensics field and the paths don't cross in too many ways but right. they do in, in in others like especially with like you know they got their stacks of bio classes and things they have to take but so here's what i wanted to ask you guys how much of a douche is this guy ryan right in the beginning of the movie oh, he's so with cool. his ex-girlfriend is that what it is i i I couldn't Brother? figure that out. It was no. Like, they're definitely a couple because they're, oh, okay. they're talking about like arguing all the time. Yeah, but she was like into Vigo Morris at the gas station. Oh, dude, she well, wanted they, to I mean, go they, in Vigo. They were so, having problems. They were clearly having problems, which is what I'm glad you guys brought this up because I was <laughs> sitting there this morning, like, I'm like, all right, I've, I watched this movie two months ago and I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> see, I think I think he's really into her. He's not into her. They work together, I guess. And yeah, they're I think definitely one, falling apart. Right. And, but I don't know then, if they were dated though. Like, see, because again, she's flirting with Vigo right in front of him. I know. I think it was almost like uh, it's like uh she's she's taking a jab at him. Ryan, you, right? Ryan. So you, so you think purposely, just yeah, it's like, okay, we're we've been arguing, we're we're kind of on the outs. There's a good chance we're gonna break up. Oh, here's a sexy Texan. Let me <laughs> uh, let me let me let me flirt with him a little bit, you know, not nothing. 
it wasn't that serious. You well, know? you know, I have to be honest. I was more upset about the armadillo dying than. Oh uh, man, that was he, rough. He, 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 seeing guys be tortured. I mean, it's because he's whiny the whole movie. He's yelling the whole movie. He's just and he's sitting on his there. walk, man, while yes. someone's driving, dude. When you, I've been, me and my wife have gone on cross country trips many a times. <laughs> that would just be like so boring for the driver, and he's sitting there like, I don't want to listen to the music. I get it. It's like mostly preachy stuff. I like, uh, you know, Jesus radio in the middle of nowhere, but geez, man, it was just such a dick, but no, yeah. the armadillo, there's a lot of foreshadow in this movie. That's yes. one of them. Yes. She didn't want to kill it. Yep. Ryan's like, you know what? I'll do it. And he smashes it up. Well, you know, and the, the other thing that I had is there's no one else that drives on those roads because they were the only car. They see no one. <laughs> <laughs> they see nobody the entire time. Even at, at the gas station, Vigo didn't have a car because right, he needed a ride. I yes. guess. Yeah, I dropped off. Yep, yeah, he, he got was dropped hitchhiking. Off. Yep. Okay, so that's the only other car you saw. Yes, and, until, <laughs> it's true. And, until you saw the yeah, until the other car later on. <laughs> yeah, and like like Doug said, I, like I've I've also driven across the country. Like my my sister moved to North Dakota a few years ago, and I helped her move in. So we were we were in the car, and we. We're in the middle of nowhere. We still saw people. You know, there's still like a you know random other car. Even in the the most sparsely populated areas, you still see other cars. People are going somewhere. But you know, I well, get it. Like this is the this is supposed to be like the no man's land. Tech, of course. But know. then at least to me is like, how, how many people go to that gas station? You know, how do they pay for? Like, how do they how keep they, it open? <laughs> how do they keep it open? You know, I mean, like, and then why did he actually? If they were trying to get them to stop anyway, why did he even put gas in the car? Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I guess they figure like we'll just we're gonna catch up to him. You know, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do this. Uh, they're, they're, play, they're playing a game. Yeah, that's kind of a thing in the other movies too. They they're, they they play with their food first. So, <laughs> like a, like a toddler, that's what they do. <laughs> exactly. So yep. one thing that happened, and they were just doing like those little random shots so they can use it later in the movie. But there was one when they show the car driving. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the car is clearly driving halfway off the road. And it's before they hit the armadillo. It's just like one of those random shots. And you hear the voiceover of them talking, like arguing. And it's just the car goes off the road and then comes back on. It was oh, like that, the stunt man like fell asleep or something. Oh, like he went on the shoulder and then got back <laughs> on. Like, <laughs> it was clearly so funny. bad. And then <laughs> one thing that I, dude, one thing that was really funny, going back to the scene with the, when they found all the bodies, was the news reporter. And we have seen in a lot of movies that me and Jamie have watched, these news reporters are so into it, man. This is like their big role. That news reporter guy was talking and talking, and then he just stopped talking mid-sentence, like he forgot his line. And then they were like, you know, we don't need to shoot this again. Because there's no way in the script they would have this guy well, stop talking. You know what cracked me up today was, <laughs> so he's, that's the other thing too, is that unless, unless they're going live like breaking news we have to get this out the news reporters on site take they have takes they do multiple oh, yeah. takes why is this guy broadcasting live when he doesn't even know what he's saying next <laughs> over the radio <laughs> i i cracked up i lost it i was like what is this guy and you know what i loved i loved that shot i just love that shot of the reporter i'm like this does not belong in this movie <laughs> i know it was so bad because it and plays then- with comedy in like weird spots yeah which oh, a lot of horror movies do, of course, but <laughs> it's just, it feels really out of place in this movie most of the time. How about the creeper at the gate? So let's talk about the creeper at the gas station. Oh, oh yes. That yes. guy in the same year, he was a sergeant. I don't know how big of a role it was. He was in uh, Dances with Wolves. So he okay. does that role as, of course, probably a guy riding on a horse. And then he's in this role when, I, I would love to look at the script for this movie. There's no way that he had lines. He just mumbled and oh. just kept saying so many words like, yeah, yeah, you want me, little girl? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. They're like, they're like, go in this direction and just yeah. improv the entire movie. Also, I love that wonky eye they gave him. Oh, like yeah. That, that bleached out eye. Now, I, unfortunately, I meant to look that guy up this morning and I totally forgot, you know, uh, so you all right? So you said Dances with Wolves. Is he in anything else? Is he? In yeah, like, he's, he's in like a bunch of stuff, movies? but nothing like big. No, he's in a lot of stuff. I ca- I recognize his face, but I couldn't remember if it was like, do I recognize him because I just watched this movie not that long ago, or do I really know him from stuff? Was he in but, Dancing with Wolves first or this movie first? It's the same year. It's nineteen ninety. Oh, yeah, but I wonder. I wonder which one he filmed first because you know, obviously, Dancing with Wolves would be a step up. So I, I'm hoping he didn't go from this movie. Uh, you know, Dancing with Wolves first, and then like. 
you know. That's how he got the role for this movie. They're like dances with wolves, and this guy wants to play this creepy <laughs> gas. How about how about Ryan? So they they stop oh. to use the bathroom. He goes into the bathroom. He obviously sees all the creepy photos of the cut yes. up women yep. and how gross it is and like stinky it is in there. He walks out and then he sees like it's like a dead animal like being hung museum in the window. He wouldn't yep. like Warner. All he said was that oh, it's really gross. Oh. His line cracked me up. He comes, he comes out of the bathroom, walks back to the car, doesn't say anything. He's like scoping out, like, oh, we got this sexy Texan over here. We got the loony <laughs> bin over here. Doesn't, but doesn't say. She goes, all right, I'm gonna go pee now or whatever. And he goes, he goes, oh, the bathroom's over there. It'll change your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's the line they gave him. It'll change your. Life. So when she goes in there, she sees the nudie picks up and and everything. I'm like. If that was my wife, I'd be like, we're getting in the car and you're going to pee on the side of the road. I'm sorry wrote, to my I, wife, but I, or, I, or I you're going to pee at the next place we see. I wrote right that now. exact same thing down. I said, there's no way any female would go in there, even hover. I wouldn't even let her. I wouldn't let no. her. Yeah. No, no. hovering. You're going to yeah, get nothing. like fumes on your butt <laughs> that I don't want near you. Like, <laughs> Speaking of lines, I wrote down one from the gas station, the creepy gas station guy. He's staring at her. He sneaks up. He says, I think he says, boo, takes a photo with the Polaroid. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five dollars for a photo. I got you real good. I got you real good. Yep. He, like, yep. he like looks like disgusted. And he goes, okay, only three sixty nine. He keeps dropping the price by like five cents. <laughs> he goes, I'll fill money. you up. I'll make you moan real good. You like? Oh, don't, forget, don't forget the gas station doesn't get any cars. So he's got to make money somehow to pay for the gas. Yep. So. Which, which that scene took me right out of the movie. Only, only because because it's it's like a it's like a redo of of the hitchhiker from the original film who's who's part of the family who's yeah. like oh I'm gonna take your picture and try to charge you five bucks and then it also it also reminded me of the scene at the end of Terminator where Sarah Connor's in the in the jeep at the very oh, end yeah. and the little kid you know she's about to cross the border and the little boy at the gas station is like trying to sell her the picture of herself <laughs> <laughs> how many times is this gonna be like a trope in a movie I know <laughs> but yeah so Vigo. The girl yeah. runs out because she sees the peeper. She knows the <laughs> peeper because uh, Vigo smashes him against the wall. And then, dude, that scene. So this is where this movie tricked me because this is one of his early movies. Like he was in mm -hmm. a movie called Prison, which was in T Tiny Lister, who we interviewed. Rennie Harlan directed oh, that yeah. movie. Yeah. Oh, and that's another, I never saw that movie. So that's I didn't another know. wacky movie. Oh, it is? But I didn't oh, know yeah. Vigo was like big in that. I just saw his name was in it. So. So when he starts fighting the guy and they start going off in the car, Ryan and Michelle, they drive away and we just see Vigo get shot with the shotgun. I, I was like, Oh, that's it. Or we think we do. <laughs> well, you, you know, for, you like think a bunch he's of, shot. for a bunch of hillbillies who they don't look like they're, the, they're definitely the smartest, uh, you know, people around, they sure do a lot of planning and a lot of oh, thought yeah, yes. to, to, to orchestrate this whole thing. I mean, so they are a lot smarter than they look. You know, yeah, especially especially in this one, they really I mean, I guess it's supposed to be like they've been doing it for so many years. And like I said, there's like I guess these are like cousins of the other family from the other two, because it's there's no one left in those movies, just Leatherface. So it's well, so is, the they grandf must, is the grandfather in the other one, the, the grandfather's, but he's but he's he's obviously he's he's like mummified in this one, but he almost looks that way in the original. So when so when they so in this one, when the little girl or whoever's like, oh, we got to feed grandpa. I'm like, D this dude is not alive. <laughs> it's been like 30 years since the first movie. It's the same guy, like the same character. It's, yes. It's the same character, but he's clear. <laughs> he's definitely dead. He's dead in the second one too. Uh, <laughs> the first one, he's like barely alive, but he basically looks like that. Cause it, cause at first, at first you're like, Oh, he's dead in the corner in that movie. And then he starts moving a little bit and you're like, Oh my God, <laughs> guy, guys do This guy's alive. And they're like feeding him blood. That's all he's eating is, is dro droplets of blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of a balanced diet for, for that guy. So, so they drive away. Mm -hmm. They're driving away. It turns into night pretty quick, right? Well, I mean, time and topography have no bearing in this movie. I know because <laughs> Leatherface, <laughs> so the crazy guy starts screaming <laughs> yep. and a garage door opens up and Leatherface and his Leatherface mystery mobile he starts coming out on the road and I'm like, okay, there's no friggin' way they're going to catch him because they've been driving for what hours. He catches up in five minutes. 
also that was that was the other thing that kind of threw me off with this movie was now you get to the point where you you, you know spoiler alert v goes in on the whole thing <laughs> Not to jump ahead, but yeah. So I figured he's Vigo's driving the truck. We're meant to think he's dead. He's driving the truck, and he's got like Leatherface riding right. shotgun, right? Which I th- is that what's happening? Because they kind of allude to Leatherface driving, but not not to be insensitive. Leatherface is supposed to be mentally challenged, <laughs> yeah, legitimately. Like he's a mentally challenged character. That's well, I kinda, think the whole family is in a way. Well, so I mean, yeah, they're all Looney Tunes, but. <laughs> But he, you know, he's slow. He's he's mentally challenged. He 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 can't fend for himself other than hitting people with a chainsaw, and and that's kind of a thing they've set up over the series is that he kind of just does everything he does because the family. If he was like in a if he was in a normal home with a normal family, he wouldn't be doing these things. Well, I I definitely as he's I not watch, driving. No, no, no. Well, because he was out there chasing him with a chainsaw while the other guy, someone else, was in a truck when he was ramming them. Mm-hmm. So, okay, but I, yeah. I think he's misunderstood because yes. he yes. seems like he has a heart at some point in this movie. He seems uh, like very, uh, he seems like he seems like Lenny from Mice and Men. Kind of, and they kind of touch on that in part two, not the first movie whatsoever, but they they definitely touch on it in part two. But so I thought they kind of get into it here, but I guess with the new studio and again this the series as a whole, the canon really it's loose, it's choppy. You know, wait, after so the, is wait so Vigo. I don't think he could be driving it because wasn't he the guy that jumped out of the bushes? Is it Tinker that's driving it? The guy with the hook hand? I think that's what I think oh, it was. Yes, yes, you're right. I keep forgetting about that guy. <laughs> that two, guy. That's the other thing. There's there's so many characters in this movie. <laughs> I know. That's the other thing. It was like that was the thing that made me think about uh, this movie feeling like multiple movies in one. So I don't want to keep going back to the others because we're talking about this movie, but the. Those the first two are very streamlined. There's a set amount of characters, hero characters. There's a set amount of the family members, and that's it. You're on the wild ride. Yeah. This is you got Tinker or whatever, and you got <laughs> you got Vigo. You got the guy at the gas station. His name's Alfredo, which I don't think they ever say his name. Alfredo. But in, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, his name's Tom Everett, so, and his name's Alfredo. So let me ask you. So is this the same location on every movie? No. Okay, no, so no, no. so Leatherface somehow moves from movie to movie. It's, like it, it's got to be, yeah. Like I said, it's got to be somewhere near. It's got to be like they're supposed to be in the same part of Texas. Um, but actually, I feel like the story, the story in the second one, because the family's mostly found out with what they're doing, and like the locals know what's going on, kind of thing. The family keeps moving. They keep changing where they are, hiding, and. It's. I, don't I, mean, I, I, only, I only say that only because it can't be hard to find. It's no, not but, the same gas station. It's it's all new. But they live in a, in the same vicinity, though. You know, I mean, that's it has to be. Yeah, okay. yeah. It can't be that hard to find to like for the for the like you know the cops or FBI or someone to find yeah. Leatherface. Well, yeah, He's eventually. A five goon. Yeah. You know, <laughs> with a chainsaw. You can't find this guy. And he keeps and he keeps killing people to make a new mask. Yeah. Yeah. He's got skin masks. <laughs> Do you ever see his face in any of the movies? Uh, you, you do in one of so there, so there's the first four films in the series. Then there's the remake and the prequel to the remake. <laughs> and then there was Texas Chainsaw 3D, which was a sequel to the original. Oh my god! That, that disregarded the original three sequels. Oh, kind of nice. like how the new Halloween disregarded all the other Halloween sequels. Yeah. Right. Texas Chance, I think they were the first series to do that, if I if I remember right. They were the first one to piss on their audience and just say, I mean, you know those like, movies that you like? That. Forget them. <laughs> Throw them out. So I know for a fact we see his face in, in the remake or the prequel to the remake. Yeah, I don't think you saw it before this, because when I talked you to R.A., before this. he was talking about that was going to be a big deal in this one. But then they said, you know what? We're going to do it in the next one, because R.A. was going to be in four and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you know what? What other movies I would love to see? Since they're moving, I would love to see the whole family have to go house hunting and have <laughs> oh. to deal with real estate agents and them planning all of this. What if they're really normal ish and they're all just acting like Fredo <laughs> is like, you know what? I want to be the creeper this week because there's no way somebody's really like that. Uh, well, <laughs> so like a tu- like, so like a Tucker and Dale kind of situation. Yes. Oh God, I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, there's I mean, there's people like that. I was just in New York yesterday, walking around. I saw people. Oh, whoa, like that. whoa. 
Whoa. <laughs> I'm from New York. <laughs> And then, right. <laughs> well, not Manhattan. Come on, I burst. I burst out of Penn Station in the middle of Manhattan, and there's a guy talking to himself and screaming at my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, there's people like that out there. Where, did, they, did they have a hook hand? <laughs> yeah, no, did he have a no. hook hand? <laughs> and and in one ear, uh, he had like the dangly earring too. <laughs> he looks so eighties, man. That guy yeah, was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So so we see the back to the the Leatherface mobile, which I guess we we decided Tinker was driving that. And they catch up really quick to the to their car, which is a pretty cool old car. Well, they knew where they were, they knew where they were headed. Oh they yeah, put them on that side road. He knew correct. Where they were. Yeah, when they were arguing over the maps. Yep. That that scene. Can we talk about that real quick? He's like, it's like a man thing to, especially when the ladies involved hitting on both, you know, hitting on Vigo. But when he starts talking about, man, you got to take that road. That's a good road. And he's like, what year's that map from? And he's like, seventy three. And he's like. Well, you got yourself an old map. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem right there, man. <laughs> and then he's like, you know what? I'm just going to listen to this creepy guy that just came out to give me this tip. But yeah. no, how about when he they throw, I think it was a dead wolf. Yes. Through the windshield. Like a, like a coyote or something. Oh, man. my God, dude. And then the, they get the flat. First that of all, the, the strength to be able to do that. Oh, yeah. You know, and where? So Leatherface was inside the truck, right? I guess. So he had to like <laughs> throw it from the opposite side of is the he car. Stand- now, is he standing in the back of the truck? Maybe. I would hope that's the only way. He we don't, do- that's the thing is we don't see. I, yeah. That's the, the movie breaks its own rules. You know, it's, it, <laughs> yeah. it wants to get you with the scare so you can't see what's going on. And then it kind of lies to you. This movie well, lied to me, Doug. I, th- I thought he, <laughs> I, I thought he had just the Jason walking fast, get everywhere he wants. Oh to man. I thought I thought let the face voice. Like he just moved. He walked and he got everywhere. Yeah. When you first see him start walking, when they're changing the tire, oh my god, dude, that was oh, that's actually the the leg brace thing with the orange. yeah, that that's actually a callback to the first movie, which I which I liked. Oh, cool. So so the end of the first movie, he dro- he accidentally drops the chainsaw like on his leg. Yeah, yeah, just enough to injure himself, and and so I liked I liked that connection there because it was like all right, we're, we're we're showing that he's injured, he's still hobbling around, he's trying to do what he's doing. Did he, uh, but he, did he also have like a James Bond little small uh, chainsaw? Oh, dude, like, that like, was the when, best ever. <laughs> like, did he have those in other movies too, or just? No, the fir- I mean, the first one, he's just got like a regular, okay. you know, the gas power. <laughs> the second one gets a little wild with the chainsaws. Like, Not a way, designer <laughs> chainsaw? Where do you go to get a chainsaw? Dennis Hopper is in the second movie in the series, you guys. Oh, I know. He's, oh. he, he fights Leatherface with like a like two chainsaws, like in giant holsters. <laughs> Why aren't we talking about that movie? Uh, <laughs> also, Answer the list, Doug. <laughs> also, I'm, I am. I'm really glad that we're talking about this and not part four because part four. I don't know. I, I think Doug. I, I would have to turn you down. <laughs> oh no, I didn't. I didn't see that. Ra was talking about that. That movie was shot uh, non-union, and yes. it was done by one of the original writers, Kim Henkel. Yeah, and he he actually got offered it, but he didn't want to work non-union. But yeah, yeah that, that's, you know, that to, it makes total sense. And, you know, like, well, all right, let's get back to part three. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, uh, so Leatherface, he's sneaking up on him, sort of, I guess. They kind of know something's coming. They and know it's coming, but he's well, badass. See, so coming. now, so that, and they do this in every single movie. He's changing it. At this point, is he changing the tire? The guy, yeah. right? And the girl is walking towards the sound, the creepy sounds that she hears with the flashlight. He's yelling at her because he's, she's, she's not, he's trying to change a tire in the middle of the night. He can't see. And she's walking towards the beds. Like, who does that? Leaving with the flashlight so <laughs> he can't see what he's doing. <laughs> you and know who does that? White people in horror movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. They always walk towards the sound. I mean, we well, all got, I think we all got flashbacks of like our dads screaming at us. Hey, hold oh. the flashlight. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it, th- speaking of cliches, when the the other guy comes in, who who's the best character in a movie? Oh, dude, he's the, the best. But are we talking, are we talking uh, Benny? Ken Foray? Yes. Yeah, Benny. Yeah. I was thinking he's the token black guy in a movie. He because he's no one died yet, and I'm like, all right, this guy's dead. Like I, I thought he was dead right away. Yeah. And I think he died like five times. Com- comes, in, <laughs> <laughs> comes in to be nice, and then just gets like a chainsaw <laughs> through the chest. <laughs> was it Jessica Biel in one of them or no? Yeah, uh, she was in the new the. First oh, remake. the remake, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. No, but it's funny in this franchise if you think about it. Two, Dennis Hopper. Three, mm-hmm. Viggo Mortensen. Four, Renee Zellweger, Matthew McConaughey. This movie is like the springboard for acting careers. Yeah, except for the first movie. Like everyone else, just like 
But it, it, is, it is based on a true story, correct? No, no. It's it's uh it's loosely based on uh like Ed Gain. Okay. Who he he even you know, you could say that about Psycho. You know, there's they kind of took his story and, and mishmashed it into so many different movies and but yeah, no, they tell you it's they tell you it's a true story at the beginning of the first one. It's just nonsense. Ex- extremely loosely based on a true story. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we were talking about Ken Foray. Yes. And uh gosh. He was so awesome in this movie. He was in A Day of the Dead. I think that was one of his first uh, big Dawn of the Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. That's which is where I definitely saw him the first time and and I love that dude. He's Yeah. He's just he I've you know I've met like a lot of people in the horror industry. Um I haven't met him, but I hear he's just the nicest guy, which I have to say pretty much everyone I've met that's worked in a horror movie has been fantastic. Like I I've yeah. never walked away been like, oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that's good to know. Uh oh, okay. So Days and Confused was uh the year before. Okay. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation, which I guess they were they were trying to get the, the Star Trek fans in on this one. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> to use that same exact yeah, that makes no sense. But I've I've seen that movie once and I couldn't do it again. Yeah, <laughs> this one. This one. I was like, all right, I can. I can do this. I can watch this again. Oh this yeah, is, it's fun. So, so they start driving again. Leatherface. He starts chainsaw in the back of the car. He mm-hmm. rips off the trunk, and then he's just like massively because Ari is a big dude. Massively, just <laughs> he's just like holding it over his head, smashing it, swinging it around. They drive off, and Ryan's pleading with her, pull over. Which I don't. I I, I couldn't imagine pulling over in that scenario. Yeah, I think this was the one time that I agreed with Ryan. I said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. If, I, if the I'm thinking of the time, right scene, yep, it's yep. the only time that I'm like, oh, you know, this, I, the, only, the only time where I was like, this guy's in a total asshole. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it started with the, the tire changing. He was trying to change the tire quickly. She was not putting the light on it, which is very difficult to change a tire with that light. The, yeah. the, <laughs> and then yeah, the lug nuts were loose. That's what <laughs> it was. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. Pull he did over, it for- let me fix it. <laughs> well, didn't she start doing it? She started uh, like changing the tire. Like, there's no way she was able to do the lug nuts, you know, the bolts. Yeah. yeah. So I think she started changing it. Um, but then, yeah. And then he wanted, like, she was like erratic at this point. His only time. And I agree. I wrote it down that I agreed with him, yeah. you know. And then I started That's, hating him again. Yeah. Oh <laughs> and God. then we see Vigo, right? And then this is where Vigo pops out of. That's him that pops out of the bushes all bloody, right? When they, before they go like crashing off the road. Yeah, when Ken Foray is driving down in his so. Jeep. I think it's him because that's like one of those things. It's you're not sure because because you don't see him again until the house, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't think, I, I didn't think I didn't see Vigo at all. I didn't realize that this, was him. Yeah, the guy pops out of the bushes. All you see is like th- like the bottom of his face, almost like he's like and looking blood. up and blood. And you're like, is it a victim? Is it Vigo? And then and then you know then you don't see Vigo again until the house, which right throws you off but yeah you know what i'm gonna say probably not because i think she looked more shocked at the house to seeing him that that if she saw him in the bushes i think she would put, put two, two and two together, together. Yeah. yeah yeah but he popped out of nowhere i was just wondering maybe there was a deleted scene maybe that was a victim that we didn't know about and they just added that in but yeah ken foray he flips his jeep over they go tumbling down down the cliff and i'm just like holy shit man this is like and dude he was ken foray had some great lines in this movie yeah, he gets out. He looks at his jeep and he says, "Damn it, total." <laughs> <laughs> but he he he's a little questionable too. Well, would you you know he he was randomly giving pills, <laughs> and they and they're taking him like it's yeah. nothing. Like, oh yeah, let me take his pill. Like you don't know what it is. Yeah, and you don't know and, who he is. He could right. be part of the thing. Yeah. And it only knocks them out for like six minutes. Yeah, because <laughs> they 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 literally like fall down like they're like passed out. And then, like six minutes later, she gets up again. Like it was like, all right, you know. <laughs> well, I guess for him, you know, six minutes is is plenty of time. So. But the <laughs> but just to give painkillers, and especially you know maybe like ibuprofen or something. But man, just giving them painkillers in a scenario like this. Yeah. Well, Ken Foray obviously didn't believe them. Right, right. He didn't believe yeah, them no, until, yeah. I guess, the creepy girl, it, right? Because he, he sees her. No, he didn't. Oh, he, no, he saw the chainsaw. I think he that's when he saw uh, him. Sees the, oh, okay. He sees the chainsaw on the car. Yeah, yeah. And then and then he's looking suspiciously at at the tow truck driver. Oh, and dude. then that's when he starts loading his gun. Wait, 
which in by the, the way, trunk. Now he's he has one guy he has to worry about. He's loading like se- eight, like how many as many bullets as you can fit in this gun. Like three time. rounds. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot rounds, of time. Shoot at him, and then if you got to <laughs> load again. But he said he's the first thing he says, or one of the first things he says to to uh to Ryan and oh, what's her name? Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. Uh, the first thing he says to them is that he's like a survivalist. He like lives at a yeah. Continent. Like he this he knows how to shoot. Correct. Slap some bullets in there, shoot I, the guy, and reload if you gotta. He loaded how many bullets <laughs> for one guy? It's like a whole he, arsenal that he's like pulling out. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Ken Forey in this. I mean, one, yeah, great in everything that dude is in. He he has he he really he does he has a great subtle way of like delivering his lines. Yeah. It's like there's like humor kind of underneath it all. Um and he he just takes charge in every movie he's in. And for him to kind of he just shows up and he's doing he's doing the the, the regular Ken Forey bit and he, and for him they kind of turn him into the Terminator in this movie. Oh dude, he is unstoppable. Yeah. Whereas like other times he's like he's very much the guy next door kind of thing. You know, six foot five guy next door. Uh but it, I really I I did I liked him in this a lot too, but I like him in everything. But yeah, but you think like you guys mentioned he you thought he was gonna die. I thought he'd die yeah. every single time. When he yeah. sees Tinker and Tinker's standing there, dude, which dude, when he has all the road flares set up pretty quick, that's a lot of road flares. <laughs> that's a lot even of if, flares. Even if, even if Leatherface is selling him out, and he's holding it, looking at it, he goes, so pretty, so beautiful, look low. And then Ken Foray says, I need you to help my I I, I watched this three times, so I can write it all down. <laughs> I need you to help me turn my Jeep up. And then Tinker says, you mean upright? Yeah. Right side up? Goes, what do you think these fucking flares are for? And you're like, Dude, what is, what's going on? And the two he things have like, nothing to do with each other. I know. And you're like, don't you want, to, if they want to kill this guy, obviously they want any, later they're really excited for quote unquote dark meat. Yes. Yeah. They're like really excited for that. But why wouldn't that guy, why would he even <laughs> wait for him to go load his, his gun up. He's watching him. He has the headlights on him. He knows he's doing something. He could have. He could have followed him. him. Oh yeah. As soon as Ken Forey turned around, he could have. He could have just followed him quietly and you know, stabbed him, slit his throat, anything. You know, no. Nope, let's him get all the way back to the car. Let's him start loading his gun. Let's the brights. Him do he was sitting right in front of the brights. <laughs> I know. So yeah. he's so. Like, he he could have been any more and less hidden. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And then he then he dives. He di- that's why Ken Forey, he, dude. This guy does not stop during this whole movie. He almost gets killed there. He dives down to hell, and he's face to face with Leatherface. Well, yeah. you know, but, but, but as the car is coming to him, it was a pretty loud truck. Why did he wait like the last possible second to dive out of the way? Like he like he acted like he didn't hear it because his head was still down. He was still loaded bullets as the car is coming towards him. Yeah, because yep. <laughs> it wouldn't have been as good if he like di- got out of the way really quick for like. This. I would love if they did that in movies. Like, there's no close calls. It's like a James Bond movie where everything's like, poof, no sweating, no like any moments. Like so that. he like rolls out of the way and the car's still like, you know, 100 feet away. <laughs> oh, that happens in Austin S- Powers. S- slowly <laughs> sidesteps. In Austin Powers, when he's like, stop. The, the steamroller. Like, yeah, the steamroller's so far away. But yeah, we, Jamie mentioned before, you know, he's kind of like James Bond. Leatherface is when him and Ken Forer are fighting when he pulls out that little <laughs> tiny like dentist dentist looking buzz saw kind of thing. <laughs> dude, that was so amazing, dude. That was ridiculous. <laughs> and then I thought he was gonna die there. I'm like, all right, he already escaped one person. He's gonna die this time. No, white trash girl from the beginning of the movie who is peeping on Leatherface starts screaming, saying, You want me? Come get me. He then Leatherface leaves a guy that he has to know this guy could be the guy that ends my demise, not that girl in the woods, but he just leaves him and goes chasing her through the woods. See, I thought she was part of the family just because she, she didn't see him all there either. So I didn't know what her deal was. I thought she was like oh, playing she, the games. She's the, she's the final girl from the movie. We didn't see. Oh, she was in the second one. No, no, no. Lit- like literally the movie that we didn't see. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> like she's, she's like the, she's supposed to be the sister of the girl whose face Leatherface is wearing for the rest of this movie. So there's supposed to be like two girls, and she's like gotten away. Oh, her sisters. Yeah. She's only, like, I don't only know. Three to be days killed ago? later anyway. So yeah. she's like, so, does a, is a female the one that always gets away? 
it's usually what happens. Yeah, in, in the series, in the series, yeah. But yeah, I mean that's that's sort of that's a trope throughout horror. You know, there's I mean there's even a movie called F- Final Girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think at this and going back to Ken Forey and and Benny as a character, I I, I know uh, in, in your interview with R.A. he said he said Benny was supposed to die originally. Yeah. And then they rewrote it to keep him in. I think at this time, like you know, especially because like especially because he was a hero in. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, and and he was like all over TV at the time. I feel like they were like, let's just play up the hero role, and and yeah, he could go out heroically, but let's you know let's keep him to the end because that's kind of what happens w- with a lot of things in his career. He ends up he ends up surviving at the end. Well, I think he I think they had to because they I mean outside of the the family members, the the two, you know the guy and the girl and him, there's no other characters. Like there's no like so there's no other heroes in yeah. this. Like he's the only other person around. Again, the only yeah. three cars that we saw in the whole movie. Yeah. So yeah. you know they really I mean, couldn't kill him. I I mean they could, they could have just just because in the other ones there there's one girl left at the end. Everyone else is dead. So I, yeah. I you, you expect that going into this, um. But uh, but you know, I, I don't think it, was, it wasn't until later that Ken Forey started getting offed in movies. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then that girl. Leatherface, the white trash girl from the movie, like uh, Chris said that we didn't see, she she <laughs> runs around, she circles back to Benny, starts talking to him about what happened to her, and goes through everything. And then, so he just fought a guy with a chainsaw, <laughs> clearly murdered people. When she tells the story, he, do you think it's smart to sit down and have a cigarette with some? Yeah. Girl in the woods while this guy's walking around. Yeah, because especially now, if it's one thing, all right. So he, if he had just dealt with Leatherface, he sees this girl. All right, she must be another victim. But he just dealt with another character that was, uh, was Two Face. You know, was, yeah. was hiding who he really was. You know, so I would be on edge with anyone coming near me. Oh yeah. Okay, the tow truck driver's in on it. So this girl with blood all over her face has to be in on it. <laughs> But he's just well, like, no. Nope. Let's, and then let's, if, and, let's and share if a smoke. And you're this girl. You, 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 you're. She's escaping. You know, she sees Leatherface. You know, with this other guy. Even if she lures him away, wouldn't she keep running? Like, just get out of like that area. Oh yeah. Like, why is she hanging around? Like, yeah, she's what? just like, I'm gonna <laughs> just hang out here in the woods and. Because this is does she does she see like those booby traps that Leatherface oh. has set up, which by the oh way, let's, 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 let's get to that. <laughs> I forgot about now that. or eventually because the, the, they're, they're total Rambo setups, by the way. Yes. Yes. Booby traps. They're just straight up wood spikes, <laughs> wood spikes, the back on the ground that drags see, Michelle they're, later. They're in the not as dumb as they come across. They, yeah. they have careful planning to yeah. capture. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 I'm gonna assume Vigo set those up, not not Leatherface. I don't think Leatherface is <laughs> the, uh, the capacity. So then Ken Foray just leaves that girl. He's like, I gotta <laughs> go help these other people out, and she like doesn't tag along. Like I would tag along with a guy that I know that you know just fought this guy that I saw. So then the white trash girl man, she gets chainsawed, and Ra told me originally what they wanted to do was from like the crotch area rip all the way up and like split her in half, but then they just couldn't do it because new line didn't want it to be that grotesque. Yeah. yeah so I can, I cut that out. I get that. at You know, at the time, cause that, I mean, I've seen that happen in multiple movies at this point, but, Oh yeah. Uh, but it's, it's funny to me cause being that new line had uh nightmare on Elm street and there's some pretty grotesque things in those movies. Oh yeah. Actually, that was another thing I wanted to talk about. You know, I know we brought up earlier that like there isn't too much gore in this one. There is, you know, there's the gross bodies in the pit in the beginning, but it's not like bloody gore, people getting split in half and, and that sort of thing. But this this movie originally got an X rating and it was resubmitted to the MPAA like 11 times. Wait, this movie we watched? This movie. Wow. So what did they cut out? Like, I don't know. From what I read in Sweden, it was banned in Sweden and they made him cut two minutes out so they really? could actually release it. Now, there's really no gross parts. And even when I re- read all the alternate versions of scenes, they're really not that gross. No, they, even when they were, they were nailing her hands to the, the chair, they didn't show it. Like they, you know, they, yeah. they, they yeah. show like they didn't show any gross at all. So un- unless maybe the scenes they made them gross got yeah. the X rated and then they had to cut back and, and cut change back. everything around. Cause it's funny too, cause with the rating system is so, 
effed, you know, most of the, <laughs> like, it really makes no sense when you look at it, like logically. Uh, but you know, I, sound effects come into play phrases phrases come into play certain certain things it's it's not all about like gore and 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 blatant sex all the time so i'm sure there had to been like maybe a few bits of dialogue that had to get cut you know vigo probably said something really messed up (laughs) you know something oh i think i have it i think i think maybe ken foray in that trashy girl had sex <laughs> that's why they were smoking cigarettes maybe they took that oh ah. i like it i like it <laughs> how about and then ryan so they're they're all like drugged up and then they're kind of coming to and he like lifts michelle up and he's like we gotta start going we gotta start going leatherface in the distance revving the chainsaw and dude he gets stuck in that bear trap yes and she and she leaves second, him she leaves well, him he kind of says go uh, still I uh, I mean like I don't know I mean she she just leaves him. I it was think. like the Jack and Rose of 1990 horror. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he she, she obviously had to go. But we're gonna get into it. But let's let's think kill count right now. Who who's leading in kills right now? Within the within this movie, it's just yeah. In this movie, Leatherface has one that we know about, right? The girl, one on the, camera. The girl in the beginning. Oh, the one girl in the beginning. So that, that he skins. So he has and then, two. And then, yeah, and then this other girl. So two. So that's it. And we're almost halfway through the movie, and there's only been two yeah. kills. Yeah. Well, you know what? These these movies, they don't really have a high body count. Yeah. You know, in comparison to, like, like other slasher franchises. It seems like a lot of mind games. It's more mind games. It's more mm-hmm. like... That's the other thing, too, is that they're they're looking for small groups of people or one person that they can yeah. trap and and kill and eat. So, so it's, it's not Jason Voorhees killing 18 people in one movie. <laughs> I know, which so, I mean, I love that too. But. Yeah. Yeah. So Doug, you're, you're, I, I want to go back to what you said about the bear trap. So you're telling me if Jamie's foot was in a bear trap and she says, go, <laughs> you're going to be like, Oh, right. I wouldn't. Okay. Well, you were just about Ryan, the douchebag <laughs> that sits there on his Walkman and you know, no, that guy's he. So if you're a douchebag, you're, you're gone. Like, you're it's gone. Still, okay. Douchebag right. done. <laughs> no, the reason I asked about the kill count, because w- while we're going along for the rest of the movie, it- it's actually a close race. So if this is like a contest, like a horse race, and you put money on one person, you might not win with... Uh, it-, it-, it gets pretty close towards the end. But so so Michelle gets up, and she her whole thing was looking for a house. Looking for a house. Like, where can mm-hmm. I go? Remember, they're in the middle of nowhere. Wouldn't you think the closest house has to do with these people? <laughs> and dude, talk about... The probably my favorite character of the whole movie, the girl. Oh, the little girl. Oh my god. Well, you, you know, you know, there's an alternate ending, and um, I put it on YouTube by accident because oh. because when I was the movie was jumping, I was trying to find like the last ten minutes on YouTube. I found the end scene, but it, it changes what the and it, it ends with the little girl. Really, what she do? Oh. So you know the scene where they're in the in the water. Um, at the end, Leatherface is in the, the pond or whatever that was. Yeah. So the main girl who's escapes, first of all, she starts singing. Like she's sitting down on the side, she starts singing. Then they then they show her walking on the desert area again, but a cop drives by with the little girl in the back seat waving to the girl. Oh my god, that's creepy. Yeah. So like I'm kind of into this, that. Yeah. So oh. one so look, go on go on YouTube and you type in you know, at like the ending of uh three and you'll see that scene. But not as creepy as her with a doll. <laughs> that is a baby skeleton. Oh, but yes. I saw, yeah, that was, that was ridiculous. And then she, you see, because the room's not very well lit when she goes upstairs to find the girl. She starts peeping in some, she walks into some stranger's house, which is kind of questionable, especially in the backwoods of Texas where you're at. You could definitely get shot just by that. But she goes upstairs and they, you see on the floor, there's definitely bones. But when that girl hands a doll to her, and then stabs her in the leg and says, yakety to yak. <laughs> Jesus. And then she backs up and she's staring at the girl. And then we see Biko, dude. And he grabs her by the mouth. And he's like kind of pissed that it took her that long to get there. Like in their whole plan, they had it planned a little bit earlier. But dude, the whole family hanging out, dude, they were, they, everyone was a great character. Oh, All yeah. of them, like you said it before, Chris. They were acting their asses off. And it was great. 
Do voice boxes actually sound like that? Oh my God. He had a normal voice. Like she had a normal voice, uh, which wasn't her voice, right? Like, <laughs> no. like she, 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 when she first comes in, I thought it was a man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is happening? Cause I actually, I totally forgot about that character, which is, I don't know what it says about me. Cause I just watched this movie like two months yeah. ago. I, <laughs> this was like the first time all over again, but <laughs> But do you, oh. do you think do you think her voice box is like Waze, the app Waze, where you can, <laughs> yeah. you can change different uh, well, dialects? I, and I yeah. was trying to figure out like what was the point of that character? Like the, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. That was and just you, that was just Mama. Yeah, and all Mama these movies, just... you, you get more family members. They're all weird. They all have some sorted past that led them to eat people. <laughs> yeah, I know. But dude, I—I uh, I mean, it makes sense. They, there's an explanation in the original movie, but this, by the time we get to these, it's just they're just doing it for fun. Yeah, but, no, but they're all—they're all good. All the characters are, dude. When Vigo is nailing her hands to the chair, and then he starts tasting her blood, yeah. and then Ray gets brought in. So this is why. I, so you think like, does Leatherface get credit for the Ray kill? No, of course not. No, he just no, it was the other two because they, 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 they were cutting him, right? So they cut- well, no, they grabbed the no, so they basically put Ray on the hooks, right? That was pretty gross. Yes. Again, they didn't show it, it was like the idea of it, right? They put the hooks through his uh ankles, they hang him upside down, and then they're getting ready to kill him with a sledgehammer that's on like a little string. Mm-hmm. And you pull the, the line, and then that creepy little girl gets like upset, like a throwing a temper tantrum that she doesn't get to do it. Oh yeah, dude. And then her and Vigo, I guess they share in that kill because they're both their hands are on that hook when they pull it. <laughs> Another one, they don't show that. So it's not like they actually showed that kill. And maybe that's something they had to take off to get the rating from X because yeah. afterwards they show him and he's perfectly fine. There's no blood on his face yeah, or anything. Yeah. It's, it's, it is crazy to me that this got an X rating first. What year did this yeah. come out again? 90 this is 90 they, they shot it like an 89 that, that's insane like i yeah. mean like what movies back then were even considered x you know like just so weird there was all there was literally, literally only a handful that weren't literally they that weren't porn that got x rating <laughs> and it was and this was one of them for some reason i i don't know i think i think by the time I'm trying to think. Was it? Oh, I, okay. I know what happened. It was when it first got released in theaters, it had the X rating. They, it did like a limited run. They pulled it, recut it again, gave it an R and then it w- got like a wide release. So, so, but that's, cr- it's crazy to me that uh, an X rate. Cause nowadays you, you would see every inch of that nail going through hand. Oh, yeah. right, right. You know, Rob zombie would be like putting nails in people's eyeballs. And I know. wonder if there's a version of that, of the x-rated version like i'd be curious to i'm see. sure you could find it somewhere there's, i think i saw something you could find there's like there's gotta be or, some dude it, you know there's a laser sat in the back in, of the theater yeah you know <laughs> with this camcorder so i wrote this down so that guy tinker that we talked about earlier he has a he has kind of like a connection to new line because he was one of the cops in nightmare on elm street the original okay he was like a sergeant something but looking at his face he kind of looks familiar and he was in roadhouse the original Roadhouse. Roadhouse. So I don't know what he was in that, but I love when he talks about the gifts that he got Junior, that he got Leatherface. He says, technology is our friend. I got that. I got him that toy where you put the words in, and, you know, they speak to him so he can learn. Dude, how about that part? That is like one of my favorite I love it. parts I of love this it. whole movie. With the, the clown, the little clown image. F-O-O-D. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Does he do that every time? Because Mama says, "Go do your lessons on your toy and get your toy off the cutting board," which she calls "toy" the chainsaw. <laughs> so then he's yes. doing that. Do you think for the last I don't know months that he's had that he's still stuck on level one, just hitting oh, the same yes. one yeah. <laughs> over and over again? He's not getting past level one. <laughs> I know. Oh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the the chainsaw that oh. what, that Vigo <laughs> gifts him. Like, yeah. That thing, it looks like it looks like something out of Jason X. Like, oh yeah, it, it, it does like not belong in this movie. Like, yeah, it doesn't belong in this movie. I don't know what it is. Every other movie, he's got regular chainsaws. Yeah, they vary in size, but they're you know they're not they're not anything that a lumberjack wouldn't have. You know, yeah. this is well. My question I love is, the blades on it. it where would like he that. get it from? I mean, considering there's one house 
it's anywhere custom, custom built there's one gas way. station miles away yeah. there's nothing else around but you could get a custom made <laughs> chainsaw it's <laughs> custom built by like a third cousin <laughs> i know just keep expanding it's got i love the like the king arthur like mega hilts on that bad boy that's what it looks like yeah it's like a dragon of... slayer blade like <laughs> Oh my god, dude! How, I loved when because hook hand guy Tinker only has you know he has one regular hand, and when he tosses the Walkman, oh, right? Man. Uh, Ryan's Walkman into the oven, which the oven's already on, like ready to go yep. for dinner. But dude, when he sticks his hand in there and then it's on <laughs> fire, <laughs> it, it was just their whole dynamic, the whole family, the way they were fighting. And then Vigo was trying to bring him back together and saying. Mama, he's going to bring us some dark meat. And then they're pissed off when he didn't bring that back. So then that's why all that happened. And then at the same time, we have Alfredo, the creepy gas station guy, just tossing body parts willy-nilly into the box. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's tossing them in. And then when Ken Foray is standing behind him with his big-ass gun pointed at him, he goes, what are you looking at, OJ? <laughs> <laughs> OJ? This is... Well, this this is- this is before that, but well OJ before was that, huge. Yeah, yeah, but no, in movies, but naked, naked gun. Oh yeah, yeah, but it, to me, it's it's like it's like a it's a weird reference. I know. I don't, you think they'd pick someone like anybody else? <laughs> like, and then all he does is hit him with the back again. He, you get hit in the head, you get knocked unconscious, throw him water, you're gonna die most of the time. He hits him in the back of the head, and he goes one down, and I'm like, all right, so one. <laughs> One, so I'm thinking like kill count wise. I forget about the girl in the mid in the beginning. I didn't count that, but I'm like, God, they're all tied. The little girl. <laughs> him. Yeah. I'm like, this movie is like, I know it's Leatherface, Sex Chainsaw Massacre three, but it's like, he's not like the main killer. Yeah, in that's this that's, that's kind of goes back to the thing too. Like I said earlier, that it it's really because of the family that he's in that he does all these things. Yeah. Cause even in the first two, it's he, yeah, he kills people. He's all over the place, but the fan, the same thing, family members are all willy nilly jumping on people, stabbing people. Uh, but I think they come across crazier than him. I mean, outside of him walking around with someone's face on his face. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they come across crazier than him. Yeah. So Actually, you guys get the back to the future kind of reference in this when they're looking at Ray, uh, Ryan's underwear. It was like, oh. hey, mama, he's wearing colored underwear. Yes, yeah, <laughs> California. <laughs> <laughs> and then right after that, Ken Foray lights the whole house up. And you're like, holy shit. Yeah, blows Kills. the truck up. <laughs> yeah, dude. I shoots, loved it. Shoots, mama gets shot in the chest. She's dead. Grandpa oh. gets lit up. Okay. One guy loses his fingers. All right, we, let's go back to grandpa now getting lit up. So oh, yeah. what it like, again, grandpa looks like he's been sitting there mummified for who knows how long. Yeah, twenty years, like, easy. Okay, when he just turned to dust, like, <laughs> yeah. especially oh, like when, when a gunshot like that, he would just turn to dust. Yeah, yeah. Like, the slumps over. <laughs> <laughs> and then Michelle, she is crazy at this point. She's a, he's been, she's been dealing with this for what three out two hours, three hours since they met at the gas station. Yeah, that's questionable. Yeah. Still, still questionable because how All quick night. it happened. But then she rips. Dude, that was gross. When she rips her hands off the nail, uh, and then she's ready to basically fight Leatherface. Yeah, she is ready to go go at him. She runs off, and dude, I really enjoyed the Ken Foray Vigo fight. Oh yeah, that was cool, man. The uh, that's actually the thing with the thing with her getting like crazy. That's a trope from the series. The final girl yeah. always kind of lo- loses her shit and like is like she like Sarah Connors and just goes <laughs> takes everyone out. But uh, or or just completely loses her mind and just runs away. It's like yeah, one or the start, other. She starts getting a little wacky, and then when Ken Foray when they're fighting, they have some great metal music playing in the background. Just I kind of, I'm not a big fan of like 80s metal like that, but I it fit the scene perfectly. Oh yeah, I dug the soundtrack to this movie, like especially the, the uh, even the song that plays over the end credits. I just like let it play, and I was just like jamming out like. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love that more foreshadowing, you know, the, the white trash girl gave him the lighter. Like you keep it when they're smoking cigarettes together. Vigo gets covered in gasoline. And that dude, was just, so good too. when he just lights him up. And then, then after that, you got to think he almost gets hit by a car. He dives down, fights Leatherface, 
sh- shoots all these people, fights him one on one. He he's been nonstop, and then he goes by right. far the most kill count. It's wild. It makes <laughs> no sense. <laughs> he wins, <laughs> and then he gets up and he's like, you know what? Let me go save this girl that he has no attachment to. He goes in there, cares more about her than Ryan ever did, <laughs> and then just starts fighting Leatherface in a swamp full of dead bodies. He reminds me of Ash from uh, Evil, Evil Dead. Dead. Yeah, he, like, he, that, he that character ends up in a situation and just yeah, just, goes, just goes for it. Yeah, this just is where, shit. And, this is and, my life now. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then when they're fighting one on one, the chainsaw just is floating in the water, spitting up water, and you're just like, it's going to come into play. And then you see where Ken Foray in the original, what the movie was supposed to be, dies. Finally, mm-hmm. chainsaw hits him in the head. And R.A. even told me that that's where it was. They even had like a cast on his head that showed his brains afterwards. So you knew that like this guy's dead. No, no. I, I never used a chainsaw before. Do, is, <laughs> is there like a safety, like, is there like a trigger to hold it down while it's going? Or is it like uh, once you pull it, it, it goes? No, no, there's, yeah, there's always like a trigger. Okay. I think so, there's always. So, yeah. so how is it so spinning it's, by itself? Oh, no. Flawed? Yeah, I, maybe th- there might be some old ones. I don't, I'm not a chainsaw just, expert, but <laughs> we have to get a chainsaw. Wait, expert. wait, you're not. We got the wrong expert on here, Doug. Yeah, sorry guys. I'm not. A, I'm not a chainsaw expert in the term of the tool or this or this franchise, but <laughs> but maybe since you but get usually a custom, the one, maybe it's custom. A, it yeah, turns I've used on. one a couple times, and it's you got to hold the thing down. Yeah, I would assume. And again, it's 90, so it's not like it's that long ago. I would assume they would have some kind of safety back then. Yeah. yeah, and they jam so. so easily too. Yeah, like he's cutting through like people, like it's like they're made out of melted butter, and yeah. it's in water. So like you yes. know, you add the water, it would be dead. It'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so then he disappears too. So Michelle's just laying there after she's caught by the trap that happens before that. And another one, she couldn't kill the armadillo. She smashes Leatherface, hits him a bunch of times in the head. It's over, and then it's light, just yep. like that again. Yeah, so, all night, partied yeah, all night. What but see now? That's the scene where she sits down and she starts singing. I, I think she did like a hallelujah or some kind of church song, and then she goes <laughs> in the next day. So that that's yeah. how it ends. Yeah. So when you're I, watching the end of the movie, this is before I talk to Ra. I watch the movie, so I had no idea that the way the ending was going to be and how everything changed. But when you saw the car pull up and it said "Last Chance Ga- Gas." Oh. I thought it was going to be like the creepy guy or oh, yeah. you know, maybe Tinker, like somebody was going to be in that. When I saw it was Benny, I was like, holy shit, how did this guy survive all of this? Yeah. And then when he gets out of the truck, he helps her in. And then when he walks back and he gets hit with the sledgehammer, I'm like, dude, this guy survived all this and he dies now. <laughs> I thought for sure he was dead at that point. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been like the great like F you, like, all right, he made it all this far and now we're going to kill him this way. Yeah. They're like, you know, the whole trope with black guys dying in movies. We made you think that we were going to go against it, <laughs> but no. But it was funny that when they tested this movie, they were like, the audience was like sad that Ken Foray died. So they actually, when R.A.'s buddy was the director of this movie, uh, Jeff Burke, I believe, Jeff Burr. Jeff and, Burr. Yep. Yeah. So when he was on vacation, when the movie was done, they reshot this. And so I, I don't know. If he knew right away, because it's not like technology, it was just old fashioned phones back then. It's not like there was a tweet about like oh, reshooting yeah. the ending of the movie. What if he went to the movie theater not knowing that and he saw this movie? He's like, hey, this isn't my movie. This isn't I mean, how it ended. There, I killed that guy. There are a ton of stories out there like that. Yeah. That it's like crazy. You, you sat down in the movie and like, this isn't what we shot. Yeah. So I'm sure, I'm sure someone saw the, the revised ending and was like, what? But. Well, you know, I, 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 I think it works either way. I think it works either way with him with him getting killed or surviving. It does, but I think for an audience's purposes, he's the only likable character in this whole movie. So I oh, think yeah. you know, to have him also die, I think that would be like I think they'd rather see the girl die. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that that would have been a better ending. <laughs> and she kills the creeper. Yeah. Shoots him with a shotgun, boom, end the movie, blasts him off. And then she actually pulls him out of the truck. She picks up Benny. He's still alive. She takes over the wheel. She drives, drives away. And then we just see Leatherface standing there. And then he revs up the chainsaw, right? And at the end? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now I thought there was going to be, I thought when she had the shotgun to his face, I thought, all right, now it's going to get gross. But yeah. I was waiting for one gross scene. I thought like she was going to blow his brains out. And even then it was nothing. very simple. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. 
the grossest part to me is when he was cutting up the face in the beginning. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. But, yeah. Or the armadillo. I thought armadillo might have been the grossest part. <laughs> it, was funny, it was funny too, Jamie. You, you, you should watch the original. There is literally no gore in that movie. There's, there's no gore whatsoever. It's, it's crazy to me because it was like one of those movies that got banned for like violence and gore. Sure. And it was like, it was the epitome of your brain making you think you saw one thing when you actually just saw nothing. Well, I think that the, I, I, and again, I don't know much about it, but I think part of the banning was probably sort of the Blair witch kind of thing where people thought it was more real than it was. Yeah. And I think yep. that's for that time. I think that's why the banning was probably more, you know, I, I enjoy the older horror movies. It's like, like hostile and all those movies. I can't watch. No, I yeah, like, no, I, 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 I like the first two saw movies and then they get too gross. You know, like, yeah. so like, I, I, I probably would like the, the original. I, I, I have to see the second one. Just the way you describe the second Texas Chainsaw, it's, I have to see that one. Honestly, watching back to back, it's <laughs> it's a fun time. It's a fun. Yeah, time. Have, Get, bring bring your daughter in. She'll. she'll <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's it. So Chris, as our guest, would you recommend someone watch this movie? Uh, yeah, I know we're running out of time here. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I I guess I'd recommend it. I I wouldn't say not. You know, don't watch it. I I definitely say skip part four unless you're really wanting to like finish out the franchise. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I would watch it, but of course one and two are, are fantastic, but I, I would watch this one too. But I, I didn't hate it by any means. I watched oh, he, it twice. He didn't hate it. He had to watch it. <laughs> I, had to, I had to watch it twice. <laughs> All right, Jamie. Um, you know, if you're looking for just a, a fun, you know, horror movie that we did made a couple of years ago, I would say definitely watch it. Um, and now again, it's coming from someone that's never seen any of the other ones. So I have nothing to compare it to, um, but just watching this one, I don't think you need to see the other ones. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think it's definitely a fun, just a fun movie to watch. Yeah. I think you said it best. It is a fun movie. And I think visually it looks good. It's not like it's super grainy, not shot. Well, there mm-hmm. were some good like transitions and wipes. Like when, when they're at the police, uh, when they're at that stop for where all the body pits are, and the sergeant basically like gives Ryan a bunch of lip, and then they just have like the light blinking on the like the traffic kind of light, like on the or, like the horse, the roadblock, and then it transitions to like the the sun. And I don't know, I just thought visually it was really good. So yeah, I would say definitely watch it because a young Vigo Vigo crushes it. He's on screen for I don't know fifteen twenty minutes. The little girl's creepy. There's just a lot that goes into it that's really good so uh so yeah so that's leatherface Tash chainsaw massacre three next movie we're going to be covering we're going to get away from the horror genre for a little bit we're going to do x2 x-men united and we interviewed the president from uh from that movie the big opening scene uh cotter smith he was in mine hunter he was in a lot over his 